Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. Uh, so, I just got done cutting this uh, hive out of this whiskey barrel. And man, these bees are super calm. Uh, I wish all my hives were like this one here. Uh, they're not even interested in me at all. But uh, today on this video, I'm going to uh, go into hive number 14. Uh, if you remember a few videos back, I, I did a 0 for 4, no queens found, and four hives uh, trying to figure out uh, what we're going to combine and what we're not. So uh, hive 14 had a lot of fresh laid eggs just turning into larva, and uh, I didn't find a queen in there, and I suspect that was from a infertile queen or laying workers. Uh, I didn't see the multiple eggs per cell uh, that you see with laying workers, but uh, the last frame I did see that had uh, the larvae in it that were a little older, they were turning into drones it looked like. So that's a sign that you had an infertile queen in there or laying workers when you got all those uh, eggs and larvae that are all turning into drones because it's an unfertilized egg. So I wasn't quite sure on 14, so I'm going to go into 14 on this video. Uh, it's been a week about, and uh, so those larvae we should be able to tell now if they're turning into drones or not. And uh, we'll know if we're going to combine a queen onto number 14. So let's get in 14 and see what we find. Okay, here's hive 14. Not a lot of activity down there on the front compared to the other hives. So maybe we'll find us a queen in here. But uh, I'm thinking no, I just want to make sure before I combine another hive that has a queen with it. Don't want to waste a queen. I'm not going to smoke them unless I have to, because if there's a queen up here, I want to. I don't want to run her off. So these outside frames are just nectar. A little bit of capped honey there. Frame's heavy, it's mostly honey. And uh, there's a nice frame of uh, honey with uh, bee bread right in here. Normally you'd expect to see the next frame right next to this just loaded with uh, larva and eggs and brood. Because that's what they use to feed the young bees before they're capped off. So here is a, this is a capped, mostly capped brood. This frame was a donor frame with a transplanted cell. The cell was right here, with that little indentation. So these young brood here that haven't emerged yet are not from a queen in this hive. This was a donor frame. Now these next couple of frames are the ones that are in question that had laid eggs on them. So I still see they're full of, they're full of larvae. They appear to be normal though, I can't, they don't look abnormal like they're going to be drones. This was the frame that I pulled out and I said, winter, winter, chicken dinner. <laughs> and then I got on farther and I thought, no, that's no good. So these are capped and here's a queen, bingo. We are a winter chicken dinner.
And there she is right there. Remember what I said several videos ago about being patient? I was ready to combine this hive with another uh, that had a good queen in it. I was just about convinced that uh, there was no queen in here. It took a long time. So I'm going to uh, try to get her marked. So when you work these one-handed queen catchers, you need like three hands. <laughs> You'd wanna, when you slide this little slide underneath her, you wanna make sure you don't break her leg or anything. So I've got it sat down on top of her and uh, there's a few other bees in there with her, but that's okay but she can't get out of there. And I wanna slide this little slide underneath her. You don't wanna force it. There, she's climbed up high, so I slid it underneath. And I squished a worker bee in there when I did that, but she was up out of the way, so I didn't get her. That just as well could have been the queen. Well, I pulled a, I don't know what you call it, but anyway, I was marking the queen. It was an awesome video, trust me. And I didn't push the record button, I guess. But uh, so this little plunger has a stopper on it, so you can't push it up and smash her, but it holds her pretty snug, but you don't push it all the way to the end. You push it up just as far as you need it to hold her in place between these two little grid, in these, these grids, and you just barely uh, touch, the, touch the pin to her. So you kind of prime your pin. You can see right here, a little spot of ink where I kind of blotted it and, and got it nice and wet. So uh, I'm just letting her dry for a little bit. Uh, when you release her down, pull that plug down fast so she doesn't rub her back on anything and smear that ink all over the place. Okay, same thing applies for when you're releasing your queen and moving this little trap door. If she's standing on it, you don't wanna slide it back fast because she might get a leg chopped off. And there she goes. Get her right back in there. So she needs to get to laying. And these workers need to get to collecting some nectar. So this hive, even though it's queen right now, uh, it's, it's got a struggle ahead of it because it's been broodless for so long. The population's down. They do have some honey in here. Uh, some of that's from last year, but uh, they're not gonna have enough stores to get them through winter. Uh, possibly we're gonna have to feed this hive in fact I could reduce it down to a single deep right now and it wouldn't hurt a thing uh, there's not much at all in the bottom just a bunch of empty frames so uh, we're in danger of wax moth uh, getting in here and hive beetles so we'll keep our eye on it uh, so their hope is the fall flow gives them a good kick. 
they can fill this top up. And they really need some in the bottom as well. We might reduce it down to overwinter it. Okay, man, that's some good news for a change. <laughs> so what did we learn here? Uh, be patient, right? I've talked about that before. The bees know what they're doing, uh, but sometimes they don't have what they need to do what they need to do. And uh, that last uh, donor cell I put in here that I cut from, uh, I think it was number four, uh, put in here. And uh, that must have took, it just took them a long time. And uh, even when I saw the larva in here, I was skeptical. I thought it was all going to be drones. And uh, I didn't go one more frame, but I should have. But that next frame over is the one that had all the, the uh, larva on it that were drawn out really long. It looked like they were going to be drones to me. So, uh, and they may still be. That may be uh, from something else. I don't know. But uh, we got us a queen in here, and she's marked, and that's a good thing. She's uh, laying. So the pattern didn't look that great. Uh, I think you saw that it was it wasn't real great but uh she doesn't have the best comb that's all ready to lay in uh but anyway uh yeah so i was getting worried about showing all these videos where i couldn't find queens and uh i was gonna lose the faith of my subscribers there so i was like well let's look in here one more time and uh I don't know if I'll even show that video or not if I don't find her. So, uh, but hey, it paid off. We found her. So we still got 13 here we got to deal with. So uh, that's a good thing. And you saw me put the, uh, the queen from my cutout uh, in hive number four. I haven't checked it. And I'm not going to check it for another week and see if she's in there okay and doing well. So we just need to do, uh, deal with this number 13 here. And seemed like there was one other, like a number, number two, I think, over there. Yeah. So uh, anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you uh, learned something from it. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care.